What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are gonna show you how to plant fruit trees in your own backyard, both bare root and potted. Let's go! Let's start things out with our bare root fruit trees. And before I get into too much about where I get my fruit trees from, deciding the location and how I choose my varieties, I'm gonna first show you what to do when your fruit trees first arrive. So here's my fruit tree box right here. Let's get this thing open. And my fruit trees are ready to go into the ground today. But if your fruit trees aren't ready to go in just yet, you can delay the planting a little bit. The way you can do this is to actually just leave your fruit trees in a cool location, something like a cellar or a shed or even a garage, somewhere that's gonna maintain a temperature of about 40 to 45 degrees. Anything below 60 will be okay. But what you don't wanna do is bring in your fruit trees inside into a warm location. What that can do is actually wake the trees up and that'll really make them less hardy when you do plant them. So that's what you don't wanna do. You can leave your fruit trees in a cool location after you get them for like about seven to 10 days. Anything longer than that, you don't wanna do. And what we're gonna do is open these, this box up and at the bottom there should be a plastic bag where all the fruit trees are in. And then that should be wrapped in some, some, wet, some wet newspaper and stuff. That helps keep the roof nice and damp. So as you'll see right here, we've got this plastic bag this is where all of our roots are in, and it's nice and damp. So we could just leave that like that for a few days if we want. But after we open this up, if we notice that it's not damp in here, we could add just a little bit of water. We want this to remain damp around the roots. We don't want to soak it though. This will help uh, keep our fruit trees in a good state until we're ready to actually plant them. The next thing we want to do is actually make sure that these are the correct trees that we ordered. Just double check. These look like they're all the right varieties. Now we want to actually prep this tree for planting. We don't just want to take these and put them right into the ground. What we want to do is actually take these fruit trees and soak them in water, their roots, for at least an hour. Six to eight hours is optimal. You can go even like 24 hours soaking them, but at least an hour is good. We want to soak these roots into the, in water so that they can start taking up some of that water so they're not dehydrated once they first wake up. This helps with like the initial shock of the transplanting. While the trees are soaking, let me show you the tools that I'll be using today. So we've got this tarp down here. This is for when I'm digging the soil out and stuff. I don't mix the soil with the wood chips. I can just lay it right into the tarp and then use that same native soil to cover my tree back up. We've got the rake to pull back the wood chips too. Then I have some mycorrhizal fungi right here. This is just to inoculate the tree roots with the mycorrhizal fungi. This works incredible with the transplant shock and just help to connect the trees all together with that mycorrhizal fungi. And I'm gonna be using some cocoa core also. So this is just to help build organic matter because I have such sandy soil. This will help the uh, mycorrhizal fungi too because it loves organic matter. This is an inert medium, so it's not gonna burn the roots or anything. We don't wanna use hot compost really when planting our trees. And we don't wanna put that around the base of the roots because that could burn the roots when the tree's first waking up. So this is just something to help increase that organic matter and build better soil structure. My favorite kind of cocoa, I've been using this one. I just get it from Amazon, the Plantonics. It's pretty consistent. I really like the quality of it, so it's really good stuff. I prefer using this over the peat moss, to be honest. The fruit trees have been soaking for over an hour. Now it's time to start getting them in the ground. First, we'll pull back these wood chips. As I'm pulling them back, you'll notice we've got some contractor's paper right here. So when it comes to planting your fruit trees, preparation is just as important as the actual act of planting. So last fall, late in the fall, early winter, what I did was I went around and I put contractor's paper down, which is essentially just thin cardboard over this whole section, and then covered it with a thick layer of wood chips. This is gonna make the soil nice and moist and ready for us to plant right into. So let's just get all these wood chips back. There we go, we've got our area all cleaned out, all the wood chips moved. Now we're gonna start digging our hole for our fruit tree. And we're just gonna place the soil into this, onto this tarp so we can easily get it right back on. And the best soil is this top stuff. This is your best quality soil up here. So we're gonna wanna use that at the bottom when we first get the tree in. So we're gonna store this off to the side a little bit so that we can use it again at the end. So right here, we've got a Liberty apple. This is what I'm gonna be planting in this section right here. So something that's really important to take into account when we plant our fruit trees is that we do not wanna bury the graft union. 
So the bottom part is what's known as a rootstock. This is a different variety of tree than the top, than the Liberty Apple. So we do not want this Liberty Apple to root right here. So we have to make sure we keep this rootstock, the graft union, at least two inches above the soil. You can see where the tree was taken out, about right here. So we can bury it to that height. We're gonna bury just a little more, just to make sure we have at least two inches of that, of that rootstock above the soil. So let's see what our height's at. We look like we can go down maybe a little bit more, so we'll take just a bit more out. So we're gonna, we got a couple big roots here, so we're gonna just widen this out a bit more. That looks better. Let's see what we look like. Height looks pretty good. Width looks pretty good. So one reason I love planting bare root trees is because you can spread the roots out so much. When you get bare, when you get the potted trees, a lot of time the roots become root bound and all tied together. So when you get a bare root tree like this though, you're able to expand the roots. So we wanna make sure we take advantage of that when we're planting. I'm not just gonna stick this in just yet. What I'm gonna do is mix in some cocoa core now. So this cocoa core is an inert medium, but it's gonna really help build the soil structure because it's a good natural uh, amendment. This is really gonna help because it's adding that important organic matter. And this is gonna really help with the mycorrhizal fungi too when we get that in. So we're just gonna put this at the bottom to help build the structure up a little bit because my soil is so sandy. Looks pretty good. Then what we're gonna do is just make a little mini mound kind of like we did for the strawberries just to place the top of this on and let the roots kind of cascade and drape down. So we want to get these roots spread out as best we can in all different directions. Just like that. We want to make sure our tree is straight and that we're going to have at least two inches of the graft union above the soil level. This looks good. Now what I want to do is make sure I add my mycos, my mycorrhizal fungi inoculant. Let's get this in. Let's use this labor to get it on all the roots. Then we're going to take our best quality soil, the stuff we took out first, and we're going to use that at the bottom. This is why I love using the tarp because you can just pull the soil right back in. And now we want to make sure that this tree is standing upright and straight. Take a step back to look at it. Looks good. And we're going to just tamp down the soil just a little bit to fill any air pockets as we're filling up. I'm going to add some more cocoa core in too. And then some more mycos. Then we're going to keep backfilling. And you notice I'm not using any compost or anything right now. We don't want anything that's too hot. I mean, you could use a finished compost, but you don't want anything that's too hot that's gonna burn the roots when they're first waking up. So I like to keep it a lot of the natural soil so the tree doesn't get tricked because this is gonna be its home, the kind of soil that it's gonna live in. So I don't wanna trick it, making it think it's gonna be in amazing soil, kind of get used to its home. We wanna guide this fruit tree, but we don't wanna baby it too much. A little more. And you could use peat moss, but I like a cocoa core more than the peat moss. Yeah, let's finish getting this filled in. Make sure the tree is good and straight. Now we're just gonna step on a, the ground just to fill some air pockets, get the tree all pressed in finally. There we go, the tree is all done planted. Now what we wanna do is just pull some mulch around it. I prefer wood chips, but you really wanna have a mulch around your young trees because one of the biggest hindrance to young trees is competition from weeds. So we wanna make sure we keep the weeds down and then when we water, these wood chips will really help retain the moisture as well. 
So let's get this just covered. We'll get this all watered in and then we'll make sure every couple of weeks or so we come out here and make sure we give it a good deep watering the first year while the tree's young, just so it could easily adjust to its new home. There we go, the tree is all watered in, but we're not finished yet. We actually have to prune this tree before we're done. Because when this fruit tree was dug out by the nursery, it actually lost some of its roots in the process. So we wanna make sure we're balancing the roots and the leaves back out. If we don't do any pruning, then in the spring and the summer, when this tree finally wakes up, it's gonna have so many leaves and it's gonna need a lot of water to support it, but there's not gonna be enough roots to actually support the leaves at the top. So we wanna remove some of the top growth to balance the tree back out. That's what we're gonna do. And when it comes to the apple trees, they get pruned to a central leader. That's what the focus of what we want to do. Because if we do good pruning when the tree is young, that's going to help us later down the road so we don't have to remove any big branches. It's also going to help let light in and help the tree to fruit more when it grows to its, the pattern that it fruits the best at. So what we want to do is have one central leader and some scaffold branches coming off the side. So as we look at this tree, we want to take it back to about 30 inches. So that's one of the first things we're going to do. So it's about up here. This here is gonna be our central leader. We're just gonna head that back a bit. I'm gonna remove this side branch because it's, it's too high and it's got a sharp branch angle. So we wanna get some branches that um, have, have uh, good branch angles that are at least about you know, 60 degrees. We don't want really tight branch angles because those actually end up breaking in the future. We want the crotches between the branches to be at least about 60 degrees. Next, I'm gonna decide on which scaffold branches that I actually wanna keep. I wanna keep about four branches going in different directions with a good proper 60 degree branch angle. And I also wanna make sure that we keep this established as the central leader. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna keep this one, this one, this one, or this one, this one, this one, and this one. So I'm gonna remove these lower ones down here. So let's take this off. This one. This one. So we've got one, two, three, four branches. I'm gonna remove these top ones as well. That'll leave me with four nice scaffolds. What I'm gonna do these now is actually head these back, shorten them, because when we shorten these scaffolds and head them back, what that's gonna do is encourage a lateral lateral branches. So we need some lateral branches on these to strengthen them and to also get the uh, good distribution of branches to get more light in. So we'll head these back to all about the same length. There we go. Now we've got four branches with some distance between and our central leader. So this tree is gonna keep growing straight up and in the future we're gonna have a new row of scaffolds. We're gonna have a gap of nothing and then we're gonna have a new row, row of these scaffolds branch up top just like that. Here's what the tree looks like when we're all finished planting. It looks beautiful. We've got our four main scaffolds coming out going in different directions with some spacing between all of them. We've got our central leader headed back. So this fruit tree looks like it's all set up to grow excellent this year and then get into production in the future. If this was a peach tree, we would do the planting the same exact way, except when we were pruning, we would prune it to an open center. So we would essentially just take this, this top one off right here and allow the four, sca sca four scaffolds to be the main branches and then there would be no central leader. So basically the same thing with peaches, but the pruning process is a little different. I know it can be hard to cut back your trees when they're young like this, but I'm telling you, it's vitally important if you want good, healthy trees that are gonna pr produce fruit within only about four years. So when it comes to our fruit trees, we like to saying, first they sleep the first year, second year they creep, the third year they leap, and then the fourth year they usually fruit. So we're looking to get some good fruit from this guy. Now, let's get into planting our potted fruit tree. And I'm gonna be planting my potted fruit tree actually in the chicken pen because I've run out of space in the garden, but I still wanna get some more trees planted because I gotta be eating more apples. They're just one of my favorite things. So when it comes to potted fruit trees, if you got your potted fruit tree from a big box store like I did where it was left outside, then you won't have to harden your tree off. But if you ordered a tree online that was potted and you left it inside, you may have to harden this tree off. So to do that, you just wanna slowly acclimate it to the climate outside. Just bring it outside for a few hours and then bring it inside and then do that for a couple days until this tree can stay outside 24 hours a day. So this tree really hasn't even barely woken up yet. And this is how I like to get my potted trees if I can, just like my bare root trees. This way when the tree wakes up, it's not gonna have a lot of shock because it's not gonna like have to wake up in a pot and then go into a new location. It's just gonna wake up in that new location. So let's get this spot dug out. 
we're just gonna dig out this section about the twice the size of this bare root tree right here. We're gonna make sure we dig any of these weeds out too. Let's get this tree out of the way and start getting it planted. We'll get this hole dug first. And when I dig this stuff out, I'm just gonna make sure I put my soil onto this mat here. Saving the best stuff on top. Probably have to go through some old roots because there used to be a tree back here. Looks deep enough, I think. Let's check the height with our tree. Deeper than we need, which is good. Gonna raise that up. And then we're gonna put in some cocoa core. We're gonna put this cocoa in. It's an inert medium. We're just gonna do this because it's gonna help build the, uh, the structure of the soil by adding this organic matter. This way when we do things like add our, our mycosin, we're gonna help get that mycorrhizal association. And this is just gonna help the tree get adjusted to its new home easier, building that organic matter. I don't wanna use like hot compost. Some finished compost is okay, but we don't want anything that's too hot because it can burn the roots of this young tree. So, I'm gonna get this all mixed and good. Just like that, it feels nice. Check height again. Probably go up a little more still. I'm just gonna backfill with a little more sand. Till we get to the right height. Looks about good. Now I'm just gonna gently take this tree out. I'm just gonna roll it just to loosen it up around the sides. And then I'm gonna pull from the base. This is what happens with a lot of fruit trees from the big box stores. They get root bound like this. See how the roots are twisted a lot? So what we wanna do is get in there and actually free a lot of these roots up. It may seem like you're doing damage, but you really need to free these roots up so they can grow out in all different directions. I'll go into it a little later, but this is one of the main reasons that I like planting bare root fruit, bare root fruit trees instead of the potted ones. But you can see we're freeing some of these roots up as much as we can. The earlier in the season you get these fruit trees, the better. This fruit tree is gonna sit at the big box store until someone buys it. So this could be sitting there for a long time. You wanna make sure you get them early if you wanna get some of your trees. Now I'm just gonna grab a little mycos and put it on the base of the roots too to help inoculate it with the mycorrhizal fungi. Let's grab this mycos here and just inoculate the roots as best we can. Be pretty liberal with it. Now let's get this tree placed in its spot, giving it plenty of space. I'm going to remove this. And then we don't want to bury the graft union. It looks like whoever planted this originally already buried the graft union. That's not what you want because if this thing starts rooting from above the graft union, because this is a dwarf tree, then it's not going to be a dwarf tree anymore. So we can see whoever put this in didn't put it in the right spot. Also, this uh, they didn't pl they planted it too deep. Also, this is way too tight. It's already starting to restrict the tree. So we're going to loosen that up. So this is a dwarf Macintosh. So it looks like the graft is about right here. So we don't want to bury that. Fortunately, we realized that early enough. Here's the graft union right here. And this is supposed to be two inches below the graft union. So here's our graft union right here. Looks like a good graft. This, we don't want this. This right here has to be two inches above the ground right here. So we wanna make sure we're not planting it any deeper than where it is right here. Whoever planted this from the nursery already planted a bit too deep. So we're gonna to have to put a little more soil in to compensate. This is why I like bare root trees. A lot of times the trees, uh, the potted trees, if they're not at a good local, if they're not at a good nursery or something, people don't really take that good a care of the trees. So let's get a little more mycos. Here's about the height that we wanted. Again, the union of the graft right here, a little hard to see, but we need this two inches above the soil level. So it looks good there. We're gonna start backfilling. Trying to use our best soil first. And then we wanna make sure this tree is straight also after we put a few handfuls in. You'll notice I'm not using a lot of compost like I mentioned. I don't want to burn the roots. I want this tree to slowly get adjusted to its new home. And it's going to be living in this native soil. 
after the tree gets more established and shows some good growth, I'll go around and do a top dressing of some compost to give it some additional fertilizer if it needs. But right now we're just trying to get this tree used to its new home. Come up a little more. So it's very important we never bury this graft union. If we were to bury the graft union, then the tree could root from above the union. Above the union is the Macintosh variety. That's not a, a dwarf tree. This tree right here is on a dwarf rootstock, which means it's not gonna get bigger than eight to 10 feet tall. If we let this root from above the union, this tree is gonna get up to 20, 25 feet tall. That is not what we have planned for this location. The tree looks good and straight. Just gonna try to step it in a little bit, stepping it on the soil just to push it down a bit, fill in some of the air gaps. Yeah, you guys saw how deep they planted that, so this really would have been a disaster if we hadn't planted this, if we planted this graft union too deep because we would have ended up with a standard size tree. Again, we'll step on this, get some of the soil down. Looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna water it in a bit. Then we'll make sure we put a nice thick mulch down. Fruit trees really do not like uh, living in sitting water. So you want a spot, spot that drains relatively well. Fortun fortunately, I have pretty sandy soil. I also help mix in some of that cocoa core, that organic matter too, which will help with the structure of my soil. So this will drain relatively well, just how we like it. And you also want a location that gets full sun for your fruit trees because uh, lack of sun is what actually creates a lot of problems with your fruit trees regarding fungal issues and all different kinds of things like that. So direct fruit, direct sun to your fruit is actually very important for healthy fruit trees. Again, look at that graft union spot. Thank God that we knew to, to bury that not as deep as it was because we would have ended up with a standard tree. So we want to make sure we keep that above the soil and that's as deep as, we never want to plant it any deeper than that. Now we're going to go around and put a nice thick layer of wood chips around it because one of the big deterrents and one of the things that sets back young fruit trees are weeds. So we don't want any competition with this young tree. Now, let's start getting this tree covered up. I'm going to use actually just a little bit of some of my homemade soil. This is just compost and some cocoa core. I'm going to put it just at the top to give it a bit of food once it wakes up. Not much, just a little bit. Because you can see some of the roots are high in this location because they originally buried it too deep. So we're just going to try to fix that a bit. Just that much. Now we're going to put a nice thick layer of wood chips. This is really going to help retain the moisture for the tree as it starts adjusting into its new home. A nice thick wood chip mulch or any kind of thick mulch around a young fruit tree is very important. Like I mentioned, one of the huge drawbacks to young fruit trees is, or one of the things that hinders them a lot is, competing with weeds and stuff. So we don't want any competition for this young tree. I'm not gonna put the wood chips too close to the base because I don't wanna, I mean, I wanna make sure that that graft does not get buried. That's very important. Looks pretty good. As this tree gets older, we're going to have to extend how wide these wood chips are because typically a tree's root system will extend as far as, as far as its branch branches extend. So this thing starts to get wider, we're gonna have to extend the base of it too for the wood chips. This is good for now though. Let's water this thing in for the final watering. There we go, the tree is all watered in. It's finished planting, but we're not finished with it yet. What I'm gonna do is similar to the bare root tree. I'm going to be pruning this tree now for a couple reasons. The first reason I want to prune it is because it did go through a good amount of shock, so I bet it lost some roots through this whole process. What I want to do is take out some of the top so there's not too many leaves and we have enough roots to support the leaves essentially. What I also want to do is set this tree up, the structure of it for the future. These apples grow in a uh, central leader, so I want to make sure I prune when it's young to remove some of the branches that I don't want there in the future. If I take them out when they're young, then I don't have to cut out big branches in the future. It'll be less stress in the tree. So what we want to have is one, 
uh, central leader going straight up, and then about four scaffold or side branches coming off at a pretty decent branch angle. So when I look at these, I wanna keep this branch here, this branch, this one and this one. So I'm gonna remove all the ones that I don't want. So this is a good branch, this is a good branch, this and this. So we're gonna take out this lower one here. Just make sure, I, make, sh make sure you, you get the right branches here because you can't go back after you cut them. So I wanna take out these high ones, especially these ones, because this branch angle right here is very tight. The crotch is, is a uh, small branch angle, something like 30 degrees. We want at least 60 degree branch angle between the, between the main stem and the side branches. So we're just gonna cut this one out here. We're gonna cut this one out as well. We're gonna let this one be the central leader. We're gonna cut out this side branch here. Now, one, two, three, four. Those are our more, four main scaffolds. We're gonna take this out. We're gonna take this out. And you can see we're now we're left with four branches going in opposite ways. We're not just gonna leave it like this. What we're gonna do is head back these branches to about here. What this is gonna do is it's gonna force the branch to grow laterals, so that's what we want. We're gonna do this one here, and we're gonna do this one out here. All about to the same length, this one as well. Now we've got our four scaffold branches going in different directions. These are gonna branch out, and we've got our main central leader here. Now we're just gonna tip off the this cup, head back the central leader just a little bit so that it can start forming the second row of scaffold branches here. So when you're getting your fruit trees in, it's so important to get them pruned to the right shape early on so that you save a lot of that, uh, save a lot of cutting away of the w beneficial wood in the future. So pruning the tree to the right shape like this when it's young will be super helpful. We won't have to remove some of those big branches that are in the wrong locations later on. It's good to get them out early. And the root system will be larger than the leaves up top, so this tree will just immediately start to go right into it good, healthy, and big growth. And soon we'll be able to get this fruit tree uh, producing. This tree that I just planted is a Macintosh. It's an apple, and it's on a dwarf rootstock. So when it comes to our fruit trees, there's basically three sizes. We've got the dwarf, which only get about eight to 10 feet tall. Then we have the semi-dwarf. These get about 12 to 15 feet tall. And then we have our standard trees. These get anywhere from like 20 to 25, 30 feet tall. These are really large. So when ordering your fruit tree, whether, whether it's an apple or a plum or a peach or a pear, just check out the size of the tree. The size of the rootstock of the tree, if it's dwarf, eight to 10 feet, that's gonna dictate how far apart you wanna plant your trees. So a dwarf tree, I usually plant about 10 feet apart from another dwarf tree. There we go, we have all of our trees planted. We've got our bare root fruit trees and our potted trees in the ground. When it comes to planting your own fruit trees, I highly suggest that you go with the bare root fruit trees for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is because there are so many different kinds of varieties that you can get. So you can plant a fruit tree, an apple, like a Liberty apple, known to be the most disease resistant apple on the planet. As opposed to if you go get your own potted one from a big box store, you might be stuck with something like a Macintosh apple. I mean, I like the Macintosh apple, but when I was at, when I was at the store, they only had wine sap, Macintosh, and then Red Delicious. There was three choices of apples. If you order them, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of choices, and you could get good disease resistant trees. Another reason that I love the bare root trees is because when I plant them, they're not gonna be root bound. So I know that they're gonna be able to grow healthy in all different directions, their roots. As opposed to the bare root trees, sometimes you just don't know. You don't think the tree's root bound, and then you get it home, you pull it out, and the thing's just a mess. So that's just another negative thing about the potted fruit trees. If you wanna to try to get some potted fruit trees that you order, then that's also super expensive too. So I can't think of that many instances where I would rather plant a potted tree. When it comes down to it, I think bare root trees are the way to go. Sometimes the trees may be a little younger, but that's also ends up being a pretty good thing because if you can help get the structure of the tree good when it's young, then it'll be less stress in the tree when it gets older, which is super important. So when it comes to spacing and deciding on your fruit trees, you wanna make sure that you go with the size of the rootstock that'll be best for your location. For instance, if you plant a dwarf apple like this, then this fruit tree is gonna only get about eight to 10 feet tall. If you were to get an apple on a semi-dwarf rootstock, then the tree would get about 12 to 15 feet tall. If you were to get an apple on a standard rootstock, then that thing would get like 20, 25 feet tall. So 
your spacing for your fruit trees is gonna be dependent upon the size of the rootstock. So for a dwarf rootstock like this, I like to plant my trees about 10 feet apart. I feel like that works relatively well. When it comes to choosing a location for your fruit trees, you want a location that gets full sun, but that the soil drains relatively well. Fruit trees don't like to be in sitting water. I wanna show you a fruit tree right here. Here's a Liberty apple that I planted a few years ago. Like I mentioned, the Liberty apple is one of the most disease resistant trees on the planet. That is one of our greatest things as backyard growers using varieties to our advantage. So variety selection is extremely important when it comes to fruit trees. Another variety that I love is the Williams Pride Apple. It's a disease resistant apple that the apples finish in late August. So you'll be eating apples in August and then you'll have more coming in September, October. So you can really extend that season. So again, variety selection, it's huge when it comes to fruit trees. And my favorite place to order fruit trees where I've got most of my trees from is Rain Tree Nursery. I'm not saying it's the only place to get them. I'm just saying that the trees have always done well for me. So I know everyone wants to be eating fresh fruit in their own backyard. And when it comes down to it, the best time to plant a fruit tree is seven years ago. The second best time is today. So make sure you get them in the ground. That's today's video, girls. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck love making videos like these because our goal is to just get you guys growing your own fruit and being able to eat that fresh fruit right from the tree. So whatever we can do to get you a step closer to there, we love doing it. There's nothing like being able to go outside to your own garden, grabbing a fresh apple, grabbing a fresh peach, just eating that thing right off the tree and not even really having to wash it. It's like something that brings me and Tuck so much joy and we wanna to try to share it with as many people as possible. If you guys enjoyed the video though, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And before we let you go, we wanted to thank one of our new channel members, Jessica Simmons. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. It means so much to me and Tuck that you're willing to contribute and we just hope that we can try to give you back as much value as possible to try to give you what you gave to us. So me and Tuck will be back again with another one real soon. The weather turned a little bit, but this is just typical for spring. It just happens to be the best time to get the fruit trees into the ground. Me and Tuck will be back again real soon. We out.